Hi everyone, we are excited to have you here in today's fun-filled learning session at YOLO. Here is a quick look at how you can submit your work after the class. As a first step, go to live.yolo.com. You can use any browser to access this site. On this page, you will see a list of all our classes. Scroll down and you can see the Submit Your Work button. And then you will see a list of the classes that you last attended which could, for example, show the dance or craft or science experiment classes you've attended recently. Next, it will show you the list of children whose names are registered in this mobile number. Choose your name from this list to submit your work. For instance, if you are Satvik Kumar, choose that name. And then, choose the class for which you would like to make your submission. For example, if you've attended the New Year's Masquerade Party session, and you'd like to make the submission for this class, click on the Submit Your Work button below that. And then upload the photo you've taken. Choose the image from your phone and click Submit. You can scroll down and view all your past submissions and see how many of your friends or peers have liked your work. You can also see others' work and like their work to inspire your friends. If you want to showcase your work on social media, that too is very simple. Click on share, copy the link and post it on Instagram or Facebook or any other platform of your choice. Just a tiny reminder, your submission looks a lot better if you could click a photo in the landscape mode rather than the portrait mode. Do not forget to tag us at YOLO underscore app. I'm eagerly looking forward to all your submissions right after this class. Hi, everybody. How are you all doing? Good. Oh, that's great. Okay. So today we are going to do another very important ruler. Um, in history and he is a mughal ruler okay so he's from the mughals also had various dynasties okay so he is from the tughlaq dynasty okay and uh, he um was one of those rulers who nobody trusted or believed and they considered him as the mad ruler you know the mad king now there is a reason why people have given this name to him and that is what we are going to um, study today and look into today so no one will call you mad just for fun sake right okay chalo masti masti mein we may call but do you really think someone would give the king a title of a mad king no, right? There has to be a logical reasoning behind it. So I've come up with a story for you all today, which is going to explain the series of event, uh, events that took place, which led to the people giving him this name, name as the Mad King. Okay. So back then, before um, all the kings and all, um, you know, all the king system, uh, uh, basically the dynasties before the dynasties came to an end at that point of time people and all the kings sorry people used to stay in kingdoms okay like each king ruled a particular area and he kept conquering the neighboring uh, areas and kept merging them and widening his kingdom so at the time of Mughal, that is the Tughlaq, basically the Tughlaq dynasty. By the time Muhammad bin Tughlaq um, came in, the kingdom was already huge. It was like almost whole of India that he had under him. Okay, and he was a very very lucky king because he really did not have to conquer a lot of area and a lot of land. There were other dynasties. There were other kings. There were other, so this was basically Muhammad bin Tughlaq was an Islam ruler, correct? But there were others also, there were, Mahara, there were Maratha rulers, there were 
there's a Gupta empire. There were different, different empires, but he had the major chunk at that point of time. But because of his foolishness, he lost a lot of area. So I think we should not waste any more time and we should directly move on to the story and see why is he called the madman, a mad king, not the madman basically. So is everyone ready? Can I share the screen with you all? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead. Okay, so this is a scene that's taking place in the court of Muhammad bin Tughlaq. So one day what happened, um, when everything was going fine, Muhammad bin Tughlaq called his men and his ministers and he told, you know what, I think, so at this point of time, the Tughlaq dynasty's capital was Delhi. Okay, our current capital, New Delhi, at that time it was called only Delhi. So it was Delhi. And uh, let's see what he says. He says, I don't think we should keep Delhi as a capital anymore because I feel we are way too in the north. And I want a capital which is right in the center of India. It will be easier for me to control the northern and the southern parts of India. Everyone was puzzled. He's like, what is he talking? Where does he want to shift? And then ministers were confused. And then he said, I want to shift it to Dalatabad, which is right in the center. And ministers had no other option but to obey to his orders. He further said that I just don't want to shift my capital. I want all the people from my kingdom to shift along with me to Dalatabad. So he told his uh, messenger to go to the, um, you know, the area where they announce everything in the kingdom and say that three days are going to be given to all the people who reside in Delhi with all the necessary items, including their animals, they need to leave Delhi and go and settle down in Dalatabad. If anyone is found in Delhi for three days, they will be killed immediately. So everyone was very scared because, you know, the Tughlaq dynasty is known for their aggression. They were ruthless rulers. Okay, if you don't obey to them, they'll kill you. Everyone decided, okay, Let's not take a chance. If the king has said, we will go. And you know what? He, Mohammed bin Tughlaq, really wanted to shift his capital. So what he said is, he even offered the necessary help that people needed to get themselves transferred. So one fine day after three days were over, and once the people started leaving for Dalatabad, he went to um, the terrace okay, of his palace and he just looked around to check if there is anybody in the kingdom who's left. So he called for a meeting, he summoned his ministers and he confirmed, has everyone left from Delhi? And they have said, gone to settle in Dalatabad? So ministers definitely agreed. They're like, yes, everyone has gone since you've given three days time. Everyone's really scared of you. And they have obeyed your orders and they have left. So he said, okay, fine. I want everything to be shifted, including the treasury, including all the army, ev everything that's there for supplies, all the supplies that were there. Everything needs to be shifted. Dalatabad is going to be my new capital. Later on, he said that, okay, um, in case if anybody is left, last warning, okay, tell them I am ready to assist them and I am still ready to provide any help that they need in the transfer. Post three days, now three days have passed, he'd given this warning, post three days, he went to the terrace and he was just having a look at his entire empire. And just checking, you know, if anyone's left. Now, how do you come to me if anyone's left? If there is smoke coming out of the house, that means someone is cooking food. That means people are still there. So he could not see any smoke. So he called his messenger and he told. First he asked, has everyone left? Three days have passed. And the messenger was very scared. He's like, why has this thing called me? And uh, the messenger just nodded. Yes, so everyone has left. And then the king said, okay, I trust you, but I don't trust the people. So what you need to do is you need to go to each and every house, look 
search for people in each and every corner of the kingdom. No one should be there. I want everyone transferred. If anyone is left, get him to me or get that person to me. That person will be punished. So the messenger obviously had to follow the instructions of Muhammad bin Tughlaq, right? He's the king. So they started, his men started looking around for people and they did not find many, but they found two unfortunate people. Okay. And those two were in a very bad condition. One was blind and the other one had lost one of his legs. So for them traveling such a long distance, right from New Delhi, that means Delhi at that point of time to Dalatabad, okay, it was like extremely difficult because the distance was massive and they did not see even if King provided them with like even if king helped them it would be very difficult for them to adjust like a blind person he knows everything that's around him for him if we just shift him to another place he would not be comfortable because he will take a lot of time to adapt and like you see he's a very old person correct so they were taken to the king and the king said no ways we're not going to leave anyone in Delhi, everyone's going to be taken to Dalatabad, and these two people will be punished. The person who does not have leg, give them, give him all the luggage possible, and make him walk all the way to Dalatabad. While the other one who's blind, tie him to an animal and make him walk all the way, so that he does not lose his way. No more help. So that's what happened. But you know, in on the way. It was a real difficult time that people were facing. Everyone did not have the supplies. So it took around 30 days to reach Dalatabad. But midway, a lot of people, um, you know, died because they could not bear the drastic climatic changes, the terrain changes. So not only animals, but people too, you know, uh, suffered a lot. And for animals, it was more because they were carrying the burden of men, I mean, of humans and of the luggage. So a lot of animals faced these problems. In the end, you know, uh, not even halfway through, both these people, the one who did not, uh, the one with the missing leg and the blind man, both of them passed away. And that was a very, very sad scene. You know, like I told you, Tughlaq dynasty, ruthless rulers. So yes, and uh, another problem was they did not have enough food supply, right? The king had just ordered them like in a jiffy, three days, you'll leave, otherwise you'll have to face the consequences. So people were very scared with whatever little they had, they left and 30 days journey on foot is a real difficult thing. So yes, they face a lot of difficulties on the way and Yes, King shifted his capital from Delhi to Dalatabad. What happened? Suddenly, you know, there was another dynasty, uh, the, the Mongols. The Mongols suddenly came and attacked Dalatabad. They attacked and uh, the king, Muhammad bin Tughlaq, did not know what to do. He thought that he's safe in Dalatabad because he is... It's his territory, like everywhere, north, south, east, west. It's like a massive territory for him. But now he was caught off guard and he did not know what to do. So then what did this king decide? He said, nothing doing, we're shifting back to Delhi. My capital is being shifted back to Delhi. So he sent a messenger and he told all the people, all of you all have to shift back to Delhi. No excuses. And if you don't do that, you all know you all will have to face consequences. The people were shocked. They were like, we just, like, we just, not right now, but it's just been a few years we shifted to Dalatabad and this person wants us to shift back to Delhi. Is he crazy? What is he talking about? But again, they did, have, they did not have any option because ruthless ruler. So this, they decided, okay, fine, since this King has already given us his instructions. We will have to leave again. We will have to face a lot of consequences. But this time, it took a toll on the treasury of the king. Why? Because he had already spent a lot of money 
to shift his capital from Delhi to Dawlatabad and shifting the entire capital back to Delhi and increasing the tax like multiplying by 10 times still would not you know be able he would not be able to cover up all the losses that his treasury had made so he was in a fix and that time mongols have introduced notes so he's like if they can introduce notes why can't i introduce my own currency so he said let's do one thing let me think of a plan in which i can introduce a new currency and maybe that way i can increase the money i will have my own new money and my treasury will be full again i'll ask people to make their money for me so what was the money that he introduced he made brass coins now brass was a very common thing so everyone in their house started making brass coins and what happened then everyone started making so everyone had a lot of money correct if everyone had a lot of money the king was at a loss everyone became rich then what did the king do? He, when he realized, oh my God, everyone's doing that. He said, okay, let me do one thing. Let me like take back all the brass coins and I'll offer them silver. Now silver is more valuable than brass. So he said, tell everyone to give back the brass coins and we are going to offer them silver. So this way we will get all the brass coins and maybe later on we can introduce. Our treasury will be full of brass coins. We'll become rich again and we'll be able to stabilize ourselves. So that's what they did and what happened in the end people were again rich but this time they gave very little silver coins why because it was brass is cheap silver is expensive so people were at a loss now they did not have much money they became poor again they were they had to change the currency right because the king had said so the king got a huge pile of brass coins but these people which is getting a few silver coins and people were shocked like what is this man doing and this way the entire the entire kingdom got ruined and finally people started like saying that oh my god like this man has really destroyed the Tughlaq dynasty they could have done like all the other rulers were very ruthless but they were better off than him right they were ruthless but they were very good kings like they wanted to capture something they would they would not think they would slaughter the other one but of course not in this case so yes this is what happened and um, it was a very sad thing so Coming to the exercise for today, what are we going to do? So you all need to make any, like you all have to research a little bit or you all can have a look at the Tughlaq ruler, Mohammed bin Tughlaq and you all need to make Mohammed bin Tughlaq. I'm giving you all options. Either you all can paint him on a paper, just draw color pen with color pencils or crayons or you all can make a puppet out of him. So you all cut it, stick it on a candy stick and show it to me. So that's going to be a submission. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you all two minutes. Let's see whatever you all can draw. Okay. Or you all can draw a palace maybe if you all want for the Tughlaq dynasty. So that's what I'm going to do. You all can do that. I'm giving you all two minutes and then we go ahead again. Okay. So I'm just giving you all two minutes and then we go ahead again. And in the meanwhile, let me tell you. So you'll understood, right? Why was he called the Mad Mad King? Till the time we're doing it, I'll just confirm it with you. He was called the Mad King because he shifted his capital from Delhi to Dalatabad. And when the Mongols came, he felt as a threat and he shifted back to Delhi. That's why he's called the Madman. So people are like, why did you shift it from Delhi to Dalatabad if you knew you you could have faced so much danger? right okay now do you all know the other Tughlaq kings okay the most famous one is il tutmish do you all know him then you have ibn battu you have firuz shah Tughlaq. yeah so there were many but he was the most um famous one even though he's considered as the madman, let me tell you, he had introduced some very remarkable administrative measures. Although he could not really get the establish them, okay, uh, he wasn't as successful. Um, 
but he was quite good. He at least did better off than his father, Giyak Aldin Tughlaq. Okay, of course he made a lot of mistakes by trans by um, you know shifting his capital from Delhi to Dalatabad, but. Every king, you know, makes mistakes, so that's okay. But this is a big blunder, and that's why he's called the madman. Okay, so is everyone done with their puppets? Everyone, show me, please. Okay, these are very, very nice. Great job, everybody. Good job. very nice okay so remember you'll need to make these submissions why because only if you'll uh, attend all the classes and make your submissions will you get the certificates okay so yes i am going to see you in the next class okay and uh, i'm coming up with new courses as well so make sure you'll attend them okay until then bye hi everyone we are excited to have you here in today's fun filled learning session at yolo here is a quick look at how you can submit your work after the class. As a first step, go to live.yolo.com. You can use any browser to access this site. On this page, you will see a list of all our classes. Scroll down and you can see the Submit Your Work button. And then you will see a list of the classes that you have last attended, which could, for example, show the dance or craft or science experiment classes you've attended recently. Next, it will show you the list of children whose names are registered in this mobile number. Choose your name from this list to submit your work. For instance, if you are Satvik Kumar, choose that name. And then, choose the class for which you would like to make your submission. For example, if you've attended the New Year's Masquerade Party session, and you'd like to make the submission for this class, click on the Submit Your Work button below that. And then upload the photo you've taken. Choose the image from your phone and click Submit. You can scroll down and view all your past submissions and see how many of your friends or peers have liked your work. You can also see others work and like their work to inspire your friends. If you want to showcase your work on social media, that too is very simple. Click on share, copy the link and post it on Instagram or Facebook or any other platform of your choice. Just a tiny reminder, your submission looks a lot better if you could click a photo in the landscape mode rather than the portrait mode. Do not forget to tag us at yolo underscore app. I'm eagerly looking forward